top on the bank of the river <laughs> where the Buddha and the Sangha rested on the way walking to the neighboring country. Ah, no wonder my eyes feel funny. Mm. So I put this one there. It's big, big. <laughs> Made in Japan, for book reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm, good. Then I don't have my hands free to express my feelings. <laughs> okay. No, I don't need to express it. It's probably more convenient. There are some uh, optic, optic glasses. They just, you know, hang on the neck, and whenever you want, just clasp together. You know, I should go and ask for that, but I don't have a time yet. I don't feel like going anyway if I don't have to. I mean, they're not urgent, and I just don't go. Five hundred uh, cowboys. The boys will take care of the cows. They're called the cowboys, huh? Yes. I don't mean Texas. Buddha was not in Texas. <laughs> At that time, not yet. <laughs> 500 cowboys and 500 uh, fishermen. Yeah. These fishermen, they have three kinds of nets. Nah? One net needs uh, 200 people to shred and to pull it. And another one, 300, bigger. Yeah. And another one, bigger, 500 people in order to manage the net. Must be a very big one. Huh? Yeah, very big. The Buddha and the bhikkhus, many bhikkhus, no? he has a lot of bhikkhus, the monks, sitting also not too far from them. And at one time, suddenly, they saw that certain 500 fishermen there could not be able to pour the net back up onto the shore. It was too heavy or something. And then these are five fish, 500 fishermen asked 500 cowboys to come and help them to pour together. Mm. And then so, one 1,000 people in order to pull it up. And then they saw a very, very, very great giant fish. On the body of this fish were all kinds of heads of different animals, like the horse's head, um, the camel's head, the tiger's head, the, um, the wolf's head, the pig's head, etc., etc. Uh, this was a very strange kind of fish. So they all came and had a look. And then the Buddha also asked Anand to go over there and check it out. And then Anand went over there and saw that. He saw 100 kinds of different animals' heads on this body of the fish. And then he came back to the Buddha and told the Buddha first. And then, of course, he would ask, nah? Anand asked a lot of questions. It's always him who asked. I wonder why nobody else knew how to ask. <laughs> Yeah, up to now, huh? Up to now, yeah. many stories. Most of the stories always Anand asked the Buddha, why is that, why is that? Well, he was clever, no? even though he wasn't enlightened, but because he was probably busy or being the Buddha's, uh, you know, attendant, he thought he didn't meet, yeah? Maybe like that. Possible, possible, it affects. But then later he meditated just for a while alone in the, the woods after the Buddha's nirvana. He got enlightenment complete right away. So he had it already in him. Just took some time. Yeah? Maybe you all had it and it takes some time. Maybe after I die, then you all go sit in a corner there and then get enlightenment completely. <laughs> I don't know. All right. And then the Buddha uh, also went there and had a look. And when he went there, he asked the fish, are you Katile? Is your name Katile? And then the fish said, Yes, sir. And the Buddha asked, uh, This lifetime you are born as a fish. Do you know next lifetime where you are going? So he said, I have to go to the uh, infinite hell. There is a hell that uh, uh, you will never get out of there, like a life sentence, you know? Yeah. And here is like infinite sentence. Anand and the whole assembly of Bichils did not know why, so of course he asked, Praise be the world honor one. 
You call this fish Katile. Why? Can you please tell us? And the Buddha uh, said thus, Listen to me, I will tell you the origin of this fish. Yeah. Long, long time ago, at the time of uh, Kajip Kajip Buddha, yeah. another Buddha, no? yeah. before Sekamoni Buddha, the many, many decades, no, no, many eons ago, another Buddha. Yeah. And between there are many more, and before that many more, and after Sekamoni there will be more. It's just at that time, long, long time ago, at the time of Kajip Buddha, there was a um, Brahman, Brahman, the first caste of the Indian four caste system. Yeah. He had a son, and uh, his name is Katile. He was very, very intelligent, many talents. And of all the contemporary, contemporary similar uh, levels of intellectual and talents, and he was the first. Oh, I'm sorry, yesterday, by the way, Sariputta, I remember, he was not the one with the wisdom sword. It's Manchusri, no? In Vietnam, we call it Vang Thu, Vang Thu Bo Tha, yeah? Manchusri, yeah. He's the one with the swords of wisdom. Is that correct? Anybody know? Yeah? Monk? Manchusri? With the word swords of wisdom, yes, right. not a sword is meaning that he can cut asunder ignorance, you know. So just saying that he has the sword of wisdom, but he doesn't use a sword, of course. He doesn't have to use any sword at all, right? Yeah. So Manjushri is uh, number one wisdom, I guess. It's not Sariputta. Sariputta is something else. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a very good Buddhist. I learned some sutras, but then I went to the Himalayas, and then busy meditating, and then busy with you all this time. I had no time to study much. Yeah, yeah. I did know before. I did know many. Just I forgot. No, I told you already. Even now, I tell you something, and I say, "What did I say?" <laughs> Getting old. Maybe I knew. I just forgot. What is Sariputta? Yeah. What about Sariputta? The first one uh, get uh, enlightened? Attain the wisdom. Attain the wisdom. He's the first attain the wisdom. Yeah, he's the first one, but he's not with... You see the, the life of Buddha, the cartoons, or I see in the YouTube. The cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's Manchusri. Manchusri is a Vang Thu, huh? Is a Vietnamese here? Vietnamese Buddhist? Vang Thu Sư Lợi Bồ Tát. It's, I think it's Manjushri. Maybe I read some more of the other sutra later to clear his name. <laughs> <laughs> but Saris Putra is not like, uh, it's not the one with uh, swords of wisdom. Okay, at that time, this boy, Katile, was the best in, in the contemporary world at that time. But concerning just the worldly, worldly uh, intelligence and, and knowledge and talent. But compared to the monks of the Buddha, then he knew nothing. Yeah, he knew nothing about all this Buddhist uh, teaching, of course. Okay. When his father died, he said to him, my son, you should remember, don't ever try to go and make a discussion or debate with the monks of the Buddha, because these uh, great beings, they have deep and wide wisdom. You can never compare. So don't dare even go near. <laughs> All right. Okay. So after his father died, he was still in school, continued to study. And in the whole country, he was praised as he had eloquence, number one, in the whole country. But he never went out and tested his uh, eloquence with the monks of the Buddha. Hmm. And then uh, his mother saw that this was one of his weaknesses, so she came and told him, you are a very intelligent person and very highly educated. Who is better than you? So the son said, Katile told his mother, uh, praise mother, the monks of the Buddha, 
are much, much, much better than I. So the mother asked, How? How better than you? In which way? And he said, Praise Mother. If anything I didn't understand or I didn't know, I came and asked them, any of them. Then they explained to me very clearly and very easy to understand. But if they asked me anything, I could not answer. (laughs) So I knew that I am nothing compared to them. Why don't you go there and learn with them? Learn the way they, they, they know things. Oh, Mother, <laughs> I am a, an ordinary lay person. If I go there and want to study with them, then I have to become a monk first. So I, how can I do that? Yeah. Hey, very easy. You just fake to be a monk. And then after you learn everything good already, then you come back to me. <laughs> no harm done. <laughs> wow. Praise the Mother, I will do that. After a while, he uh, bought some clothes, yeah, wrapped around his body and bought a baking ball. He went in there to the assembly to study with the monks. There were so many monks at that time with the Buddha, you know, so nobody checked who is who. And as long as you shave your head and had a baking bowl and, and wear a saffron robe, then everybody accepts you as a monk. So, of course, he was already very intelligent. Huh? After a while, he remembered everything inside. He learned everything, understood everything. Yeah. And then one day he went back home to have a visit with the mother. The mother asked him, did you study well already? Are you better than all the monks already? <laughs> study well may be okay, but better than the monks, must be dreaming. So he say, praised mother, uh, beloved mother, concerning the education, I am the same as them. Meaning he's learned everything from them already, so he thinks it's the same. Uh, but in the meditation, uh, I am very, very low. <laughs> Why? How do you know that you are low on meditation? Beloved Mother, because uh, meditation is very uh, difficult. And it's not just sitting, but inside, you know, must know the inside, a vision. And it's very mysterious and very deep. I try a lot, but I, I cannot do like them. I, I want to understand the meditation inside. I cannot. I cannot go inside. You cannot, I cannot penetrate the essence of meditation. You know, it's not just sitting. Huh? Probably he didn't learn the initiation, you see? He just came in, but he didn't, he didn't know that he has to go through initiation, not just being a monk. Yeah? yeah? He didn't know that. Yeah. And of course, if you meditate or you initiate it, you don't ask the sister nearby, are you initiated? How do you initiate? And you, even then, the sister won't tell you. This has to be with the Buddha or the appointed monks, yeah, in order to be initiated. Mm. Therefore, if we talk about this meditation or visions and you know, whatever, you know, inside, I'm always lost. I never want any discussion on this topic. Okay, the mother say, from now on, whenever you discuss anything with the monks and you have lost and they have won, then you just scream loudly, you just uh, slander them, you just call them, you just, you know, degrade them. Yeah, just to cover up, you know. Yeah. Okay, so the son asked the mother, Mother, but all the monks, they are practicing compassion and mercy. Uh Uh-oh. They haven't done any sinful things. Why do you tell me to scold them, degrade them, and yell them, and, you know, uh, humiliate them? Why? So the mother said, if you're louder and you scream and you yell at them and you degrade them, then you win. And they won't know what to say. They wouldn't know how to answer that. They wouldn't yell at you, they wouldn't degrade you back. That means you win. Oh, God. <sighs> What a treasure of ignorance. Um, Yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you. 
When you wash your hands, you wash oil into the bucket, right? And then use it for the toilet, right? Or not? Yes. You save water, right? Yes. Okay. Another thing, um, whoever has the uh, water, water and electricity ability should, should buy those uh, filters, you know, put it on the tap. And then whenever you open, you turn it to the filter side, Turn this side, then you can wash as normal. Turn to the filter side, then you have filter water. You can drink straight, direct, because it's very clean. That's why I drink every day. I don't cook water. Unless I don't have any filter, I don't cook. Or if I don't have a filter, then I use a cloth or something to filter. Okay? So here, it's, uh, of course, it's, it's not as, um, as good as if you use a cloth, because we don't have to buy one more extra, but it's okay. Uh, one filter like that uh, attached to the tap, you can use for three months, regardless of how much water you use. You just use it and drink any time you want. Just go in the bathroom, turn on the tap, push it to the filter side, and drink. Yes, I do that all the time, okay? Mm. The more simple, the better, that's all. Not because I'm lazy. I, I have a uh, cat to it stand it still and all that. I do it only now and then, when I need to drink something hot to cleanse the throat or when I have customers, <laughs> I have friends, then I cook tea for them or something like that. Then I use the kettle. <laughs> 